Hello and welcome to our talk, Just in Time Compiling Ruby Regex on Truffle Ruby. I'm Benoit Dallos and I'm leading the Truffle Ruby implementation. And we also have Joseph Heider, the T-Regex creator and maintainer. We are both working uh, in the GraalVM team at Oracle Labs. If you don't know Truffle Ruby yet, it's a high performance Ruby implementation. It is the GraalVM JIT compiler, which is what give it, what's give it the good performance and targets full compatibility with CRuby 2.7, including C extension. So the idea is you can just take your app uh, and run it on Truffle Ruby without changing anything. Uh, it's open source on GitHub. Uh, we also have a Twitter and more recently a website. Uh, so let's start with some background. So today we're talking about regular expression uh, and regular expression are always run by a regular expression engine. Uh, for CRuby, that's Onigmo, uh, which is actually the fork of Oniguruma. And those are backtracking regular expression engine. Uh, what's specific about them is they support 30 encodings, which is quite a lot, while most regular expression engine only support one or two encodings. And Truffle Ruby initially used Joni, and Joni itself is just a port of Onigmo to Java by JRuby developers. Uh, so then basically it does the same performance to Onigmo, uh, but of course convenient because then we just have compatibility with uh, whatever CRuby does. Uh, what we would like to do is to actually have better performance for regular expression in Truffle Ruby, because we improve in many areas of Ruby, uh, and not just Ruby the language itself, but for instance, we also optimize smaller language of Ruby, like for instance, array pack or string formatting. Like for instance, this C star there or the person F there is something we can actually just in time compile and like have special handling uh, where it occurs in the code and not just call a generic routine that just formats everything, but just like handle that specific case. Uh, much faster. And so we had this for some sub-languages, but not yet for regular expression. Uh, and we can't really use Joni for this because Joni basically like uh, like other backtracking rigs engine, they just support all regular expression. They don't specialize to a specific regular expression or anything like that. They just interpret like each part of the regular expression one by one. Uh, but what we want is really to do something better than that. Uh, and for that, what we did is to actually have a new regular expression engine, which is called TRIGX. Uh, and that's the work of Joseph Haider and his team. And I'll leave the, the talk to him now. Thank you. As already mentioned, uh, TRIGX is a separate regular expression engine, uh, which was developed on the, Truffle, uh, on the Truffle framework. And it is based on finite state machines, uh, more specifically deterministic finite automata. Uh, a quick refresher for anyone who forgot about them. State machines are a mathematical construct con consisting of states connected by transitions and every transition has a set of accepted symbols or characters. So in the figure on this slide, we would have an automaton with two states where, the, where state one is the initial state denoted by the start label and state two is the final state uh, denoted by the double circle. Uh, the transition uh, between the two accepts a single A. Um, regular expressions used to be very, very easily mapped to uh, finite state machines when they had less features, but with the additional uh, features introduced, especially by Perl and other languages, uh, this is no longer the case. Uh, fortunately, the simple concepts are still there and they can still be mapped to finite state machines quite easily. Uh, we'll, we'll just start with the easiest one, which would be concatenation. So to have uh, a state machine match a sequence of terms, you would just chain their states together. Uh, next up would be disjunction, which already uh, looks a little more complicated. Um, here we see the state machine model of a, of a simple uh, two-branch disjunction which is modeled by adding separate transitions for every branch on, this, on the state preceding the disjunction, in, the, in this case, the, the initial state. On the left, that, that would be the direct mapping, uh, which is a non-deterministic automaton. Uh, it's non-deterministic because it has two transitions from one state which uh, match the same character, A, from, from state one, uh, which of course can't be used for, for matching the actual regex. So in practice, uh, TRAGEX has to transform uh, 
automata like this to deterministic ones by doing a power set construction. On the right, we, we see the NFA model transformed to a deterministic model, the DFA. And uh, this construction, in, in this case, the number of state, states actually decreased. But in practice, uh, this transformation can uh, introduce an exp exponential number of additional states. Uh, if too many states are generated by this transformation, t uh, bails out and hen hence the expression to onigmo in, in Ruby's case. Um, next slide, please. Next up on, on the supported features would be uh, infinite quantifiers or unbounded quantifiers, which map to automata very easily because you just uh, add back edges or um, uh, transitions that loop back to a single state or to a single subcomponent -compo sub of the automaton. Um, the first feature that actually requires a, an, an addition to the classical state machine model is capture group tracking, which t regex models by adding annotations to every uh, transition to note if they enter or leave a certain capture group. In an uh, expression like, like the one seen here, uh, we can simply traverse the automaton and for every transition that enters or leaves a capture group, just uh, record the current character index. On more complex expression, it does, it's not as easy as, as, as in this case. And in t regex, this can actually incur overhead proportional to the amount of states in the state machine, but still not proportional to the amount of characters in the string. So it's still better than, than a backtracking engine. Since we can't uh, cover every implementation detail of the regex right now, uh, we'll just show a list of supported features. Uh, we already covered concatenation, disjunction, infinite quantifiers and capture groups. Character classes are trivial because they just simply map to the accepted symbol set of a single transition. Counted quantifiers are partially supported. Uh, we actually unroll the, the counted loop that they represent. So if you have a, cont a counted quantifier from one to four iterations, for example, there are four additional states in, in the state machine present. Uh, the, the quantified term is copied for every possible inter iteration count. So this only works for low iteration counts. Support for arbitrary iteration counts is planned but not yet implemented. Anchors uh, supported as well. They actually map to the backslash a and backslash c anchor simply map to additional uh, initial or final states. So they don't add any overhead to your regex matcher. Uh, caret, dollar, backslash b, backslash large b, uh, capital B, uh, are actually replaced by equivalent expressions that use look around assertions. Look ahead assertions are also supported. They are merged into the state machine representing the parent expression. And look ahead, exp uh, look behind, Assertions are also supported, but only if they consist of a single sequence of character classes or literal characters. Unsupported features uh, include back references, recursive su sub expression calls, and negative look around. Back references, uh, of course, are not. Uh, are not easy to map uh, to an automaton. It might be possible, but we haven't tried yet. Uh, re references to capture groups in replacement strings, such as in GZAP, are of course supported. They, they're not directly related to the to the regex engine. Negative lookaround might might uh, support for negative lookaround might be added in the future, but is not yet uh, in the engine. Because if sub expression calls uh, will probably never be in the engine because they're just too complicated to uh, to reasonably map to an automaton. Possessive quantifiers and atomic groups are not yet supported, but may be supported in the future. Right now, uh, we, we 
have, we have the option of ignoring at atomic groups and possessive quantifiers are just never uh, looked at. In most cases, uh, for, for those two features, it's probably uh, fine to just rewrite them to their quote-unquote normal counterparts. Uh, conditionals and abset expressions have not been looked at yet. So uh, now for the interesting part, how do we actually just in time compile a regular expression matcher? Normally when you would uh, run a state machine based regex matcher, you would have a loop similar to the one depicted here. Um, in, in every loop iteration, you would have a current state that you have to load from a list you would load the current character from the input string, uh, have an optional bounce check, of course, and with the current character, you would match every, every of the state's transitions. If one of the transition matches the character, uh, this would give you the next state and the loop continues. If no transition matches, uh, the loop breaks and you would return whatever the result is. This is uh, too inefficient uh, for, for Tregex. So what we do is we actually instruct the Graal compiler to compile a separate copy of the loop body of a loop very similar to, to the one described here um, for every state. So you would have a separate loop body for state zero, separate loop body for state one and so on and so forth. And this enables the Graal compiler to uh, special, specifically compile matchers for every single tr transition in, in the state machine. So on the next slide, we, we see what that looks like for a given uh, regex matcher. Here we match the expression A plus followed by B or C. This, this is a very simple expression. It just has three different states and uh, followed by the label state zero we see the first uh, compiled loop body. We first load the current character and increment the index by one. This of course happens in every loop iteration because uh, every loop iteration uh, handles a single character in the, in the string. Uh, note that we never jump around in the string, we never go back, we, uh, we always linearly go through the entire string. Uh, after the loading of the, of the current character, we see an if-else cascade where every transition of the current state has one branch. So in, state, in case of state zero, we have one if, uh, one if condition for the first transition, which goes to state A, uh, state one, when, it's the, when, a, when a character A is encountered. In state one, uh, we have three transitions, one back to the state one, one back to state zero and one to the final state two. The final state two doesn't have any outgoing transitions, which is why there are none in, in its compiled loop body. So it just reduces itself to a single return statement. Uh, this, this entire code can be basically one-to-one -one compiled to, uh, to actual assembly and can also be inlined in, into whatever uh, is calling t -rex. With that, I'm giving back to Benoit. Thanks. Uh, so let's look at some performance results. Uh, so here we're going to use the benchmark IPS gem to measure peak performance or so performance after the relevant function at time to be just in time compiled. And we're gonna compare three implementation, Truffle B plus TRIGX, Truffle B plus Joni, and Truffle B 2.7. And we run Truffle B here on GVMC. We start with some micro benchmarks that are really simple. So we have a string ABC. Does it match any of these five regex? Uh, actually, the first and the last regex, they do not match this string. The three in the middle, they do match. Uh, and what we see here is like uh, it's a speed up relative to CRB. So CRB is one by definition. Uh, we see that Joni is basically at the same speed as CRB. It's not really faster or slower here. Uh, but two regex in different league here. We get a 25 to 40 times speed up. Uh, not percent times faster. So it's really, really, really much faster. Uh, and what happens here is like there are really multiple factors that makes this possible. Uh, 
The first of all is that T-Regex is not a backtracking engine, but it's a finished state machine uh, regex engine, uh, which as we saw earlier is already much faster. For instance, it only goes once to every character of the input string and not multiple times, it never backtracks. That's kind of the point. The second thing is actually the state machine by t can be compiled and is compiled to uh, machine code. Uh, and that's so much faster, like a, a normal backtracking engine would just like see every part of the pattern and then go into those some logic there. And like basically uh, the, the backtracking engine would handle any regular expression while t will compile a specific version just for that specific regular expression. And so it's much more efficient at it. Uh, and then the last thing is that actually uh, TRGX is a truffle language and truffle Ruby is a truffle language and they both run in the same process. They both run on GraalVM. And what that means is actually the Graal compiler can see through both languages and inline through them and optimize them together. And so the, the Ruby logic around the regular expression like this match call, for instance, with for instance, there's some encoding checks and then it constructs potentially the match data and so on. Uh, all of this is in line together with the regular expression logic inside TRGX. And then all of it is then eventually uh, compiled into machine code. And that's really how we get this really big speed up here, like we have more than an order of magnitude speed up. So those are really micro benchmark uh, to illustrate like how much we can gain with this, how much can it give to the just time compile regular expression. Uh, if we look at a larger regex benchmark, here we have four of them. So the first one is Liquid. Liquid is a gem uh, from Shopify. It's a templating language. Uh, and in Liquid, there are actually two big workloads. There's parsing and rendering. So you parse the Liquid template into a tree, and then you render this tree into then a string uh, with the runtime values. And here we look at the parsing part, because as a part that uses uh, regular expression. And something to note here is that actually like Liquid as used by Shopify in production actually does parsing fairly frequently uh, because simply they have so many different templates for all the different shops uh, that they actually cannot just cache all of them. It would just take too much space. Uh, so they actually parse on a regular basis templates. And so this needs to be fast as well, not just the rendering part. The second gem we look at is browser sniffer. Uh, it's a gem to detect which browser, operating system, version, etc. I use and it uses the browser user agent string to do that uh, and does that using regex, of course. Um, and then we have the regex redux, which is a benchmark from the computer language benchmark game. Uh, here's a variant which doesn't do IO in the inner loop because it's just not what we're interested in here or not really relevant. And what it does, it reads a 50 megabyte file of DNA and RNA sequences and transform them using regex. And it's mostly using the GSUB and SCAM method in Ruby. And finally, we have the syslog benchmark, which is not the syslog standard library. It's actually like, uh, it's basically a regular expression which uh, fits the BSD syslog protocol, which actually has an, F F C, an RFC, sorry. Uh, and basically pass a log line, which fits that. And so extract the information from it. Uh, so it's really like, yeah, how fast can I extract information from a log here using a, a bigger regular expression? Um, and here are the results. CRB is again uh, the baseline, and then we see all the others compared to it. We start with liquid parse. Here we see that Joni is actually like something like 1.8 times faster than CRB. Uh, and the reason is not actually Joni is faster, the reason is Truffle Ruby is faster than CRB because there's actually here some Ruby logic in liquid parsing. Like it's not only regular expression, it's also like building the tree and so on and some control for et cetera. Um, and so that's why we see the speed up here between Ruby and Joni. But then if you look at TRIGEX, it's basically two times faster than Joni. So here it makes like a big gain, like Truffle with Joni was only about two times faster and now we're something like 3.6 times faster, uh, which is really nice. Uh, then we go to browser sniffer uh, there. And for the following benchmark as well, basically, Johnny is not really gaining anything, which is kind of expected because the translation of the, the regular expression engine from Ruby to Java doesn't really change significantly. Uh, and those benchmarks are really like heavy on regex. They don't do much except regular expression matching. Um, 
But we see on the other hand, Trigex makes significant gains here. So we see, for instance, a 2.3 times speed up on both the sniffer, uh, something like a 3x speed up on Regex Redux, and a 9x speed up uh, to pass uh, syslog lines. Um, so that's really good. And here we can see, like, when you compare the Tregex to Journey, here was really like the gain of by Tregex itself, right? So I think there are really like multiple factor gains, really impressive. Uh, for a Ruby benchmark to, to be so much faster just by changing the regex engine. Of course, the benchmark are very focused on regex. Uh, that's, that's the interest here. Uh, if we talk about something else, about security here, uh, one common problem, security issue of vulnerability is RITOS, which stands for regular expression denial of service. And what happens that backtracking engine, like for instance, like Onigmo or Joni, uh, they, they backtrack, it's in the name, so they might consider a, a single character of the input sequence one time, two times, but also many times, and they might, can backtrack excessively, uh, depending on the regular expression pattern. Uh, and sometimes it goes exponential, and then it's called catastrophic backtracking, because at that point, like, an innocent-looking regex uh, with some malicious input can basically take minutes or hours or even longer just to match one string. Uh, which of course is really bad for the server behind it because it's blocked uh, trying to match the regex, but of course there's no point to it. Uh, and this is actually a fairly frequent issue. Uh, so for instance, in Rails in 2021, I found actually three redos issues and the last report, security report from Rails on May 5, actually out of four security issues, half of them were redos. Uh, and what's cool is that t actually just cannot have readers. Uh, it always matches in linear time. Whenever it goes through the input, it advances. It never goes back, it never backtracks. Uh, so it just doesn't have this category of issue. Of course, like Ruby regular expression are really powerful and have too many features. So not all of them can be supported by t -Regex. We saw earlier uh, some features which uh, are not supported on t currently. And in that case, what happens is then Trafferby falls back to Joni and Johnny is backtracking. So then it, it could again be a problem for Reuters. Uh, but what we do there is Trafford, we can emit a warning uh, with a flag, we say one slow regex. And then at that point, we'll tell you uh, which regular expression, which file, which line requ might require backtracking. And so what well, requires backtracking might not match in linear time. So basically, you can find out very easily uh, which regular expression are susceptible to potential uh, Reuters attacks. And if there are none of them, then it means basically you're immune to readers for your application. Another subject is, uh, we already talked a little bit before, uh, yes, I've talked about, uh, is atomic groups. Uh, and atomic groups cannot really easily be supported by a uh, thin state machine uh, like TRIGEX. Uh, and the reason is basically what an atomic group does is basically tell to the backtracker, stop backtracking, right? Like, do not reconsider whether you took this branch, like just commit it. Uh, or lose the, the entire subpart of the regex. Um, and so it's just something that just doesn't make sense in a Finistan machine. Uh, but the problem is those actually typically use as a workaround for catastrophic or excessive backtracking. Uh, and then it's unfortunate if this regular expression could not be handled by T-regex because T-regex just doesn't have that problem of excessive backtracking. Uh, so for the case where like it's used for performance, it's actually fine to just ignore them in T-regex. Uh, the little subtlety here is that atomic group can also be used for semantics, uh, although it seems very rare and an intuitive and so on, but it at least it's possible. And here we have an example, for instance, which match a, quote, a double quote and then any amount of character within an, at an atomic group and then another double quote. And this actually does not match uh, this, the given string here. And the reason basically the dot star will eat everything, including the second double quote. Uh, and we'll never reconsider, we'll not backtrack, we'll not try to uneat the character, right? Uh, and here we see, yeah, of course, a silly example, but like it's an example of how it can affect semantics. Um, what I want to do in Truffle Ruby there is to be optimistic and assume that atomic groups are used for performance, not for semantics. And we will validate this uh, on uh, open source gems, uh, see if there are actually usages of atomic group for semantics. I expect it's really rare, but we still have an option on our way to disable that on a given regular expression. And with that, we reached the conclusion. Uh, so we've seen that using finite state machine for regex matching, uh, like regex does, is uh, much faster than backtracking engines like Onigmo or Joni. 
uh, and it's also much safer from a security point of view. Uh, and then trustworthy and TVX can compile Ruby regular expression to machine code. That's something really new. I don't think any Ruby implementation or Ruby Rex engine uh, ever did that before. And even better than that, we can inline the Ruby logic and the regular expression logic together, which leads to really big speed up, like 24 times to 41 times faster than CRuby on this micro benchmark. Uh, that's really made possible by this uh, inlining and just time compiling of both. And then on the larger benchmark, we see also really big speed ups of 2.3x to nine times faster, uh, which I think is also really good. And finally, we saw that trafferby can also run when regular expression are at risk of catastrophic backtracking, but they're at risk of causing a redos, uh, and then makes it really easy for you to review them uh, to make sure it's not an issue. And finally, I would like to acknowledge uh, some people who helped uh, on this work significantly. Uh, so we have Yerka from the TRGEX team. Uh, what he did is he added the Ruby flavor of regular expression inside TRGEX. TRGEX supports other languages, for instance, like JavaScript and Python. Uh, this was quite a big work, especially because Ruby supports many encodings uh, in regular expression directly, while other languages typically only support one or two encodings for regular expression. Um, he also did uh, most of the integration of TRGEX inside Truffle Ruby, basically bind them together and end up with the fallback and so on. Uh, next, I would like to thank Duncan from the Truffle Ruby team. Uh, he did various optimization related to regex matching. Uh, he had to set a few in string scanner, in GSUB, when accessing the last match data in the CPI and so on. Quite a few tricky corner cases. There is not sufficient to just have a good regular expression engine. It also needs to be very well integrated in the language using it so it all optimized nicely together. Uh, yeah, and then reach the, the good performance we saw. And finally, I would like to thank uh, Kevin Minar at Shopify. Uh, which is some further optimization related to regular expression matching in Truffle Ruby. Uh, notably, he enabled more splitting and inlining of regular expression, and this plays really an important role in this micro benchmark we saw earlier. And with that, I would like to thank you uh, for watching this talk. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask us on the Truffle Ruby GitHub discussion or on Slack, on Twitter, whatever you like. We are more, happy, more than happy to answer your question. Thank you.